Hey guys, welcome back to 31 Days of Halloween. Today we are creating this poisoned claws makeup look. I wanted to create a look that if you got slashed by a creature with poison tip claws, this might be the result. So to start off, I just quickly sketched out where they would be and then using spirit gum, I laid down a layer on all of the lines to create a tacky base. And then using nose and scar wax, I created little worms and started laying them down. You can see I used my spatula to help press them down and blend them out on the outer edge. And then I also had a little bit of Vaseline on my fingers to help smooth that in even further so it didn't stick to my fingers while I worked with it. This part takes the longest of the whole makeup, so you want to just take your time and be patient with it because sometimes the wax can get very annoying and you have to almost just step back, relax, and go at it again. <laughs> and for all of the cuts, it's pretty much the same steps. Make the little worms. You can make them as long or short as you need, and you can work in steps and just build it up from there. Blend them out as you go and as you need to blend things in. Just keep using your fingers and smooth it out into your skin. When you have all of your cuts in place and secured down, you just want to go over it with powder to get rid of the shine that kind of comes from both using the Vaseline and the scar wax itself. And from there, we can move on to makeup. So to start off, I just wanted to pale out my skin. So I used a foundation and the Pro White Mixer from NYX, and I applied it really lightly and kind of buffed it in with a sponge. This was just so my skin got a bit more of a deathly pale look, since if you had this much of an infection going on, you are probably on your deathbed. And then just be sure to carry it onto your neck, chest, and ears, just so the whole look comes together and it's not just your face that is white. Then with a cream red product, I just applied this underneath and on top of my eyes and then just blend it out with a soft fluffy brush. This was because I really want to start building up the irritated, sickly look around the eyes, as I'm sure if you really were poisoned and infected with a massive wound, you would not be doing too well. So I want it to look like you were really suffering with the infection. And to continue that, I also added in a berry purple color and just blend that in as well. Before moving on to the black cream, and for this, I applied it inside of the wounds. Normally for a fresh wound, you would do more purples and dark reds to really give a serrated skin effect. But because I really wanted to emphasize the idea of a poison infecting your bloodstream, I decided to go with black and this will help reflect better for the blood that goes on later on. Then with the cream red again, I just used a makeup wedge and patted this on over top. You want to make sure that whenever you're applying anything on the scar box, you always use a patting motion, even with the foundation, because you do not want to move all of your work and just like scrape it off your face. Then for the next steps, I did use my alcohol palette, but you can of course continue on with cream products or grease paints, whatever you're feeling. And for this, I just took the blood tone color and patted it on with a stippling sponge to create more of a broken capillary effect. And then with a very fine detail brush, I also started painting on veining by mixing good amount of alcohol with the color so it was very faint. You'll definitely want to carry the colors down onto the neck since this will usually show and give a better impact for the infected feel. I actually carry it on quite a bit further at the end of the makeup, but this is just kind of where I went for now. And then going back to the black in the alcohol palette, I did the same steps but wanting to create black veins coming out of the wounds. And don't be afraid if you're going a little bit heavy handed and it's getting a little bit crazy looking as it is right here because the next step is going to knock all of that back and make it make sense. So in order to do that, I just went back to the foundation that I originally used and my makeup wedge and patted that on over top. By building this up over top, you'll still see the veins showing through underneath, but now they'll really appear more to be underneath the skin and actually spreading out along your face. Then when you're happy, you can move on to the blood. For this, I used thick scab blood and just applied it into all of the wounds with a regular paintbrush. 
And if you feel you applied too much foundation at this point, you can always go back with the same paints and just add more veins and kind of build up back and forth. So don't worry about putting too much or too little because you can always play with it. Here, the red just wasn't enough for me. I needed the eyes to be darker and look a little bit more sickly for me. So I went in with a navy blue shadow and just applied it really sporadically to give almost like a bruised, sunken in effect. And then I just applied a little bit of that on the inner side of my lips as well to help them look a little bit affected by all of this. With the same thick blood and the stipple sponge again, I went back over the wounds and kind of added more to that gore effect. And the last step I did to finish this up was just to line my bottom waterline with black to really help the eyes look a little bit more sunken in. And that was it for my poison claw look. You could probably incorporate this into just about any makeup or just to try and freak people out. But I definitely hope you enjoyed. I, of course, will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so, so much for watching. Your support through this month has already been absolutely mind-blowing. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye, guys.